Hey everybody, we're going live on Soul Mama Says. There we go. No. You from New York? A New York liberal atheist too. What does that even mean? <laughs> We're going to make America think again. Think. Right? That's what we're going to do. We're going to make America think again. Mata. Make America think again. And that's MAGA. Mata. <laughs> right? We're going to make it Mata. It's going to Mata, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, this is Soul Mama Says. I'm Carolyn Schwartz. Carolyn Schwartz Black. Carolyn Black, however you want to call me. Just don't call me late for dinner. Hey. Uh -huh. This is Todd Osborne right here. Hi. And Sorry I was gone last week. Oh, I couldn't okay. join you. I forgive you. You had car trouble, right? Yes, we were still having car trouble. And, oh, so your lovely honey is here with you today, yeah, hanging out in the, in the booth with Mr. Mike, right? Um, and today, we are fortunate to be joined live in the studio with my new friend, Garrett Lee. Say hello, Garrett. Hello, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. Garrett um, uh, is from an organization called Woe. W H O A Whoa, which stands for We Help One Another, which brilliant, brilliant. I know, I like that. Um, and we met about a week and a half ago, maybe at a just a coffee to talk about how to build bridges and how to listen to each other and uh, what we can do in this post fact <laughs> era. Um, <laughs> and so I invited. Uh, Garrett to come on and talk about what his organization is doing because you guys are doing some awesome stuff. So why don't you first um, tell us what WOE is? Well, thanks for the introduction. That was very kind of you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so WOE, yeah, as you mentioned, stands for We Help One Another. And our vision is a thriving world where well-being is well. And Sounds good to me. So what we're trying to do is um, remind people of the ways that we can elevate our well-being or our happiness from the inside out at a personal level and then at an interpersonal level and when you know we're people who are connected that emerges into the community level so and how do you, how can you remind someone that that well-being comes within how can you do that well there's a number of things that uh, the research field of positive psychology tells us will improve our well-being so what we developed is uh, a currency it only works if you give it Mm -hmm. We want to make America give oh, again. That's right. You gave it to me. I need to give it to somebody else. Yeah. That's right. So it's please explain. Go ahead. It's like a pay it forward of, of good vibes. Mm -hmm. So when, you, when you're when you recognizing some good vibes in in real life... Um, that sounds like my entire circle of friends, actually. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's already there. But how come we're not capturing that value? Well, what is, what is the value? How do you capture the value of... Of good vibes. I mean, some people see it in when they when they purchase things. Some people feel like the value is in when they buy things that gives them well-being, but it doesn't really. The research says that that is maybe immediate and instant gratification. Well, yeah, instant gratification. But lasting <laughs> happiness, it turns out, comes from doing altruistic things and mm -hmm. uh, mindful things. Mm -hmm. So what we really want to do is connect people in space and, and in a way that they can recognize one another's good vibes. And this currency only works if you give it. It, mm -hmm. it. It's only a currency in the in the sense that the digital points can be exchanged for goods and services that businesses are willing to offer right. as gifts. So it's a gift economy that we're trying to build. Um, and and so one way that we want to remind people that that we can connect in positive ways is through listening. Mm. And and so we. We recently had a premiere event at the Madison Public Library on February 4th. It's called the Real Life Library. And what we do is curate a number of people from the community. You curate people? Yeah, as books. Okay, yeah. okay. Explain. Living, please. breathing books. Living, breathing books. Please yeah. explain. I was not able to attend this event, unfortunately, but um, I was very interested. So please explain what you mean by curate people. Yeah, so we go through a process of finding people who have stories that they are willing to tell publicly. Okay. And then we give them a little bit of nonviolent communication training and mm -hmm. storytelling training. And and then we prime them for the, the live event, which was at the public library. And then event attendees can come, and there's a menu. We 
of books. That we were they, working on this one when we met, yes. Yeah. And so, yeah, then folks can come, our folks came and checked out whatever book spoke to them the most. And so, a check Literally out, spoke to them, <laughs> yes. right? And so, uh, event attendees then could uh, engage in a 20 minute listening session hearing the story of the book. And so, they were only, they could just listen. It's like they're reading the book, they're listening to the book, they're not, it's not a conversation. Yeah. It's just a listening session. Right. Uh, well, I shouldn't say just a listening session. There's so much importance. Yeah. In simply, I should say. Simply, simply it's a better word. It's simply listening. It's a really beautiful gift that we mm -hmm. can offer someone. The, the gift of paying so much attention in such a simple way, that listening, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if we're on the theme of making America something again, mm. I think we can make America love again. Oh, mala. Right? We're going to mala. We're going to make yeah. everybody go love again. And we're all, we can all be bad. And right? listen. And <laughs> listen and love and learn. Mala is Spanish. Ma that's right. Mala is Spanish. We can be bad. We can be bad hombres. Nasty <laughs> women. And I'm already a nasty woman. I know I'm surrounded by, na by bad make hombres. America love again. Right? <laughs> I love that idea. Um, so, the, yeah, the gift of listening. I mean, we pay therapists for the gift of listening. You know, that's and, true. And, right? That's that's what they are there to do is simply to listen and to reflect. But we don't. You're saying that we don't need necessarily. Well, some people do, but necessarily we don't have to pay someone for that. But just giving the gift of listening to someone yeah. is 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 valid. Has has so much value. And what we say then is, you're a human. I hear mm. you. I'm listening to you. There's so much dignity in the words that you're offering me, and what I'm giving you in return is my attention. And I think that's one of the most beautiful gifts that we can give one another. Absolutely. And that's what it's designed for. That's one example of what, whoa, we help one another, this mm -hmm. mutual reciprocity. We, there's a lot that we can offer one another. And so I offer you my attention, mm -hmm. and you offer me the beauty of the story of your lived experience in this. Oh, I love that. That's wonderful. Are you, so are you familiar with StoryCorps? Yeah, yeah. A bit, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not. I, I want to learn more about it, but it's the same sort of thing. It's like this. It's run by the Library of Congress, correct? I think where they they collect stories mm -hmm. from people, and then they're requ I think they're visually like this video and mm -hmm. audio as well, mm -hmm. and so that for the rest of eternity, or however long, <laughs> however long we're here, <laughs> fingers crossed. Rests. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. By the way, mm -hmm. um, love. We're going to teach America to love again. Um, that those stories are there forever for someone mm -hmm. in the future or some alien culture to come and discover, you know, okay, these were actual people. And so what, what, the li what your library is doing is essentially the same sort of thing. So are, are you recording these conversa these stories or not? Yes, outside yeah. of the live event. Okay. So the live event is just that, where people can come event. and engage in a live setting. Mm -hmm. And then we are... Uh, we're very fortunate to be working with Jordan Biagamula. Uh, he has that's a business. That's a tricky name. <laughs> he has a business called Mr. Origin, and okay. he's graciously stepped up to record each of these stories, mm. and then we'll put them. He's a very talented uh, filmographer, and uh, we're going to put these into a format that you can then check out through an uh, through the app that we're oh, building. Okay, that. that's great. That's really great. Is this going to be an ongoing live event then? Um, yes, we'll continue to. Then? Curate books mm -hmm. for live events. Yep. So if you missed the event, unfortunately, yeah. a couple weekends ago, where will this be? When, when and where will this be happening again? Well, we do have a date at the Madison Public Library, mm -hmm. September 16th. Okay, it's that's a, a way off. Put it on your calendar. Yeah. Stick it in your phone, right? Put everything in your phone, and then you won't you won't forget. Like a week ahead. Ding. We're also exploring a number of other opportunities that mm -hmm. are emerging in the community from the UW to Edgewood to Madison College. You should hook into the, the like the state library system or something. I think that would be that would be really great because people people up north, people uh, in you know on the everywhere, all mm -hmm. all over the state in places that you might not come into contact with all the diversity that you get here in Madison um, need to these stories need to be he heard is equally as the people who live up north and in the more rural parts. Their stories need to be heard. And this is what we were talking about um, with the Building Bridges Leading Locally um, mm -hmm. talk, was that everyone, like, and, and I consider myself a, a very educated and worldly person, and I bear the badge elite proudly. I'm not, I'm not shy of that word. 
Um, but there's this issue with people like me is that we think we know better than people who haven't had the same kind of life and world experiences. And that's a problem for people who live in other parts of the world where they, you know, the, the, there, there was that, um, the rural elite, right, that um, was the rude pundit, I think, did a blog about it, um, that, that the people who live in the rural pla places, they have completely different issues that they, don't, they think we're not listening to. Mm -hmm. And so being able to listen without judgment. There's that word again, Carolyn. Listen, mm -hmm. Being able to listen without judgment, right, just sit and listen, and hearing what someone has to say is such a gift. Because that's, I think, what happened all over this country and how we're in the situation that we're in. That a lot of people felt like, those liberals are not hearing us. They're supposed to be so smart and educated. They are not hearing us. And so they they fought back. And this, this the current situation is what happened. So we all need to learn to listen so much better. Thank you so much, Garrett, for coming on and talking about... Well, we'll have some information in the uh, podcast notes. Um, about we help one another. We help one com. another, and you can find them on Facebook. And what's the web address? We help one another. Oh, we help one another. Yeah. Com. Thank you. Um, and uh, we will be back in just a few. Stick around. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank awesome. You. It goes fast. That was really good. Yeah, that went really fast. Uh, that was really I looked good. this up this morning because she sent me the notes last night, and yeah. I was just like, wow. The, and especially the real life library portion, I was like, wow, that is so. It's cool. really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I really want. I'm, I was so bummed I wasn't able to get to that. The weekends can be a little. We're going to have premieres of the videos too. Ooh, right? That sounds cool. Yeah, we're. Uh, and we'll announce that. I was going to maybe mention that, but uh, yeah, when, uh, when the videos get and are ready to go live. We're going to have live screening probably three at a time. Oh. Where you can come and watch the Deep. video and then have a Q&A with the books. We're going to invite them back. And then you should video that whole thing and Facebook Live that so then you can put it up on YouTube. Yeah. Seriously, no, the whole, like that's yeah. what I've been doing. All these these live videos, hello everybody. I've been, I've been putting them up on YouTube so that people can then mm -hmm. get, you know, hear the information or see it wherever they want. So, great. Awesome. Thank you. Thank great. You so Right, no, we need a hug. Yeah, I was going to say, do you have a hug? I got room for a hug, always, always. Sisters of brothers, got a hug. All right. Nice to see you, Todd. Exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Good to see you again. Okay. Hey, Carrie, you could come in. There's room. Yeah. She doesn't want to be on the video. Oh, you don't want to be on the video? Why not? That's the whole thing. No, I'm just. Listening. Okay. <laughs> Garrett's a hugger. Garrett's a hugger. You too, man. He's so cute. Oh, we're on? Okay. <laughs> Three, two, one. Welcome back to Soul Mama Says. That was Garrett. Isn't he cute? He's just so adorable. Um, and he's got some really nice, amazing things to say. So thank you so much for coming on. Garrett Lee of, uh, well, we help Whoa. one another .com. Um, interesting stuff. Check out the website. And uh, there's a whole bunch of other uh, projects that they're involved with, too. Oh, right? yeah. So, there there are a lot, a lot of things going on. And I like the idea of, you know, make America listen. Make America listen again. Make this America is what I, listen. Carolyn, I, this has been in my head for the last several years, actually. Um, yeah. And as a former recovering broadcaster, uh, <laughs> you know, I understand the importance of communication and yes. and the the listening por portion of, of the communicative process. Oh, you absolutely. Know. No, what did you say? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the fact that they're they're taking on that that kind of uh, living, breathing, live book, you know, just I thought that was really cool. Yeah. I thought that was because everybody has a story to tell. Mm -hmm. Everybody does, and the the world that we live in can be as narrow or as broad as you want to make it. Mm -hmm. And by hearing all these other stories, it's like opening a book. You completely learn about a whole other thing. People who don't read don't get to experience other things, and people that don't listen. Here's the question. How do you encourage sure. folks that wouldn't take this upon themselves to go out and, and you know, try to have these, these new experiences through That is a good question. For myself, I don't know if it just happened by osmosis, by, 
by the fact that I was moving around a lot, you know, 20 years ago, 20, 30 years ago. Um, but my world expanded with each move that I made. And well, yeah. when I look to people back home and, you know, my hometown, it looks so small. It looks, and their world view in their mind, though, is still huge. Because they but don't now know that I'm any looking, better. But the, exactly. <laughs> now I'm looking down at them and going, your world is very tiny because I've been outside your tiny little world, yeah. or your, your, your giant world, and now I can tell you for a fact. Your world is small, but from the person very small. inside that yeah. world, that comes off as being so, so how do we share that? How do we get rid of that? You take the listening, you take it to them. Mm -hmm. You go to the places where people need to be heard. But here's my problem. How, how do you break through that bubble when there are people who, who don't want to believe that there's anything outside their little Truman show, right? You gotta <laughs> give them a hook. You gotta hook them with something, right? How, but yeah, you have mm -hmm. to identify. You have to find... What's gonna trigger? What's gonna trigger? But what's gonna, you have to find something that you can connect with on. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, sometimes it's being a mother. That is a universal thing that I can, anywhere on the globe I go, if I meet another mother, I can find a way to connect with them in some way. Sure. You know, sometimes it's really hard. <laughs> I have met some moms who I'm like, really? Your they mom should, too? Oh, take good for you. Away. <laughs> um, there's a mom card. I don't know if you knew that, but there is. We keep it secret. It's like tucked inside our bra, probably. <laughs> that, there, there is like a whole compartment in there that you boys just don't know uh, about. It's like a secret thing. That's what we're doing. We're That's what around. we're doing in the bathroom <laughs> all that time. Right, we're checking, make sure everything is in place. But but yeah, it's finding where's that commonality. Where's where there is something. There's always something that you can relate mm -hmm. to to another person. With. Oh yeah, and I it's, found that I, from from the sticks of Texas that I've been in to you know the giant metropolitan cities that mm -hmm. I've been visited. There is something that we can all connect with. Yeah, on a one on one on a one on one level when you have time to find those commonalities. My husband. Um, Tom is a is an insurance salesman. He started doing this last year, and he never thought of himself as a salesman. Mm -hmm. And the way he's been able to to forge ahead in this very challenging uh, business is that he's finding ways to connect with those people yeah. that he's meeting. You yeah, know, that's, that's and and he's meeting pe he's meeting people that he knows he has no like connection with. Mm -hmm whatsoever he may find their politics completely abhorrent you know and they may find his you know but he's there to do a job and so he has to find something that he can connect with with these people and he's coming from a we're both east coast you know liberals and we come very from loud a, very, very loud we come <laughs> from a very different just a completely different way of growing up and that's not to say that it's better or worse it's just Different. And when you come from such a different perspective, people that don't understand, like, they, what? I don't get it. You know, they, they freak out. I don't, and and I, how do, that's what I'm trying to do. Is how do you get past that, those inherent differences? And, I don't know. And especially right now when there are so many walls up around and yes. so many of us. You know, so many. It's just, it, it, it's, it, you start saying something and immediately it's la, 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 I'm not hearing you. I know what I know and I know what I know. Yes, I know what I know and I, here, okay, so do you ever see that there's like, I can't remember what the, what it's called, but I've seen this done in several different situations. There's like a circles of what you know. There's what you know, what you know you know. What you know, you don't know. And what you don't know. And what you don't know, you, you don't know. You sound like know. Donald Rumsfeld. Oh, really? We have the known knowns, the, the known unknowns. Yeah. And no, the, but there's the, I, I took I took theories of knowledge and reality yeah, yeah. in college. See, there's my liberal snotty you, upbringing. You elitist, yeah. But but it's, oh, you know so much. Uh, huh. But I know that I don't know exactly. some stuff, and I don't. And there's stuff that I don't know that I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much of there that there is, but I'm sure there's plenty. <laughs> and that's the problem when people aren't willing to accept. That there's stuff that you that don't know. That there's stuff know. out there that you don't know that you don't know. You don't know. Yeah. And that's where I run into a problem. I'm willing to listen. Mm -hmm. Really, I am. I am such a generous person deep down. But, you know, if you mess with me and you start telling me that black is white and up is down, like people have been doing, you know, then I'm going to get mad and bust out my liberal elite big words, you know? <laughs> Bigly. <laughs> 
my ginormous words you that I'm like going to make up. Ginormous words. <laughs> I just, I don't know how. I, I have. I'm just, if someone can help me, call in at at six zero eight two one zero one six six seven, and please tell me how I can I can get past that because I have I, I need someone to help me. <laughs> I need I need someone to help me figure out how to get past stupid. And, and and willing ignorance, right? When well, you don't know, a strong you, word, right? So. When you don't know that you don't know something, then that's an excuse. But when you're then told, here, this is this is actually the truth, and then you willfully ignore it. Here's another that's one of my, my problem. Here's another one yeah. of my favorite words too: is perspective. <gasps> Because oh, it's right hard to listen if you can't. Yeah, last week on perspective. perspective. I yeah. read that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I love you for it so made long. Me, it made me think long, again, long. though, because it's it, that's that's another key to this whole uh, listening process too <clears throat> is to trying to have the perspective of the person that you're communicating. And that's with. just it. If you come from such a completely different if you can't even grasp the concept of, of, exactly. of having of, of understanding perspective, you know, like oh, I see it this way. If that's the only way that anybody could possibly see it, you're losing. So how does uh, someone uh, who's willing to see someone else's perspective deal with someone who's not? No, that's that's the, the right thing. Right there. That's it right there. If someone can come up with that answer, uh, you, can, you will win a full collection of my um, coloring books. <laughs> because seriously, folks, that's, that's worth a lot. That's a lot of therapy right there. Right? When we're talking about paying for therapy and listening, well, coloring is therapy, right? <laughs> um, you know what else is therapy? Self-care. Self-care is very important, especially in these times of trials and tribulations. And um, one of our sponsors, we have sponsors this week, um, is Soul Escape Healing Arts. They are located at 2007 Atwood Avenue. Right next to Text Hubs. Right next to Text Hubs. You can get some therapy in the form of a margarita. <laughs> and you can get some therapy in the form of a massage. Um, and they're, uh, it's a corner of Winnebago on the east side, if you're not familiar. And they have, ther let's see, therapy, relaxation, balance, and wellness for the whole soul. Ooh, love music. I like that. They offer many varieties of professional massage and therapeutic body work, as well as skincare products, uh, massage oils, lotions, and creams with custom aroma therapeutic blends. I know. You're just like, bleh. It so, sounds wonderful. You can find out more at www.soulescapehealingarts.com. That's S-O-L, like the sun, Soul Escape Healing Arts. I will have that uh, web address up on the podcast notes afterwards as well. Go check them out. They're awesome. And then go get yourself a margarita afterwards. <laughs> Text tubs, you owe me 50 bucks. Um, <laughs> right, because that's how we do. We hear what Soul Mama says. That's a really good thing to do for yourself for Valentine's Day. Or people, if you're looking for something to give to someone on Valentine's Day, if you're the sort of couple that does that, not everyone does. My hubby and I just exchange nice, you know, Happy Valentine's Day, sweetie. I love you. I tolerate you. Mwah. <laughs> we got a file cabinet, and we ordered a, we're ordering a transmission. Ooh, that's very Sexy, romantic. isn't it? That yeah. is. Major appliances, <laughs> like, that's a big that's a big deal. The couple that shops together. Right? <laughs> How much is that transmission again? <laughs> My husband wanted to know if he wanted a new dishwasher this year, and I was like... <laughs> Well, you know, I'd really like one, but I could, we could pay some other bills instead. So happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Love comes in many forms, it folks. Does. It comes in many, many forms. It is not always um, flowers. Flowers die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> flowers die, and then you have to throw them out, and they smell. <laughs> right? Don't buy me flowers. My husband stopped by. Well, well he bought me flowers a few, well, for my birthday. <laughs> and that was okay. Once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon, but don't buy me flowers and don't buy me jewelry either. You know, I have what I need. Mm -hmm. I don't need anything else. <laughs> and I like to purchase my own stuff anyway, like funky, funky jewelry. What do you like for Valentine's Day? Uh, just time with my my honey. That's nice. I don't really need a lot. And you're spending it today with her too, because she's in the booth. <laughs> That's so nice. Hi, Kiri. Hi, Kiri. <laughs> <laughs> Kiri from Lake Erie. <laughs> um, that's that's pretty awesome. 
Um, so you need to take care of yourself for, for Valentine's Day. Take care of each other, right? That's what it's about. It, well, it's it's not named for some saint who like, you know, like a massacre or something. Oh no, there was a Saint Valentine's Day massacre, right? And now it's just a, a Hallmark <laughs> holiday. Reason to buy chocolates? Buy them tomorrow because they'll be fifty percent off. Right. <laughs> right. Save. Show your honey how much you love them by saving money. Right. All right. So Mama says we'll be back. Yeah. Tune in and give us a call at six zero eight two one zero. One six six seven MadisonTalks dot com. Okay. Okay. Um. So there's. Oh, did you watch that that Alicia Keys thing? I did. Oh my God. What is it? We are here movement. It's this. Um. She made a a movie like a short film. Basically, what if? In L.A., bombs started dropping, and she was a refugee all of a sudden, and had to run with her children. And it's really powerful, and it's like this shout-out to millennials about what you can do, and how to stay active. And how to, yeah. 23 ways you could be killed if you're a black American. Oh. Huh? Oh, Yeah. Coalition of organizations joined to get together millennials to give millennials an exciting way to change the world. Break through today's ADD <coughs> environment. <laughs> well. well. And then that, I'm not quite sure I understand why they used. Okay. But there's a lot of different things. Yeah, let me in. Some back in. Okay. Stimulating conversation. I want to talk about the Grammys for a little bit. Sure. Hi. Is somebody watching? Hi. So, did you watch the Grammys at all, Todd? Have I haven't you... watched the Grammys in about 13 or 14 years. Really? Yeah. Is that like a conscious decision? Or yeah. Is it just, yeah. Well, it's just when it comes up, I go, oh, is it February? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a word you know, I like catching the highlights, you know, the, the following week, I guess. But award shows and I, I, I used to pay attention to them for my job, basically. Because, mm -hmm. you know, recovering broadcasting. Mm -hmm. So I had to know stuff. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I had to be on top of things. I had to know what I was talking about and relating to people who were watching the TV. Right. And award shows for me, over the years, they've just, in my view, this is just my own opinion, my own perspective, have turned into a self-aggrandizing, mm -hmm. you know, behemoth, uh, where uh, it's style, you know, over substance. Totally. Uh, I don't understand. I mean, I'm sure, everybody's got their idea of what what's artistic and what's not, <laughs> what's better, what's good. Yes. It's, it's, yes. it's subjective. It is art. I know. So what subjective I like. immediately I, makes I me go. Means, it but I know doesn't I like. mean anything to me if it's subjective. Yep. I got my own opinion. You got yours. Great. Yeah. You want an award? I'm happy for you. Yay. It's what the masses. Yeah. Are, are saying. And I think what I discovered the other night when I was thinking about uh, not missing the Grammys again, well, we haven't had uh -huh. broadcast TV yeah, we don't in have a while, TV yeah. Either, yeah. is it's, <laughs> it's turned into this, this vehicle for this giant collective pitch session the next morning. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what went wrong? What went wrong? Great it's it's water cooler terrible. talk, you know? Oh, and, it is. And, and, I think all award shows are basically well, that. Right. You know, and I, I heard there was some audio problems. There was. That's um, what I wanted to talk about. I found it very interesting um, that a show of this caliber, yeah. right? We're talking millions of dollars probably go into the production I can't understand of something like this. Like and there that. were massive technical problems. Um, uh, a I'm not sure if, uh, what did they say, James Corden's fault? That was all, like, choreographed. Like, he fell and he did all this stuff. But the Metallica, uh, James Hetfield's mic, mm -hmm. right, wasn't working. And At first. At first. Yeah, and then he had to, like, go and share Lady Gaga's mm -hmm. mic. And, um, and then Adele, what did she do? She, like, stopped halfway through the beginning of of the George Michael tribute song because she fucked up or something, pardon me. She, um, she, and I, like I just did, she, like, messed up, like, the beginning couple lines, and as soon as she did, like, she'd gotten through this very long intro to the song, and then 
sang. It was like where the where the the rest of the music comes in or something, and she was off. Are we talking Mariah Carey level? Or? No, no, no. Mar- she was actually singing. <laughs> See, it's a gauge now. She was actually singing. <laughs> she was actually singing, but but she came in and it was just off, and she instantly was like, "Oh, oh I can't do it anymore. We got to stop it. I'm sorry. I'm so fucking sorry. I really, we have to stop. What? Can we start again? Because I don't want to mess it up." And it was so like everybody started clapping that she stopped, which I thought was very. Mm-hmm. Like, why are you clapping that she stopped? She shouldn't have stopped. She should have just kept going and fixed it. She should have just righted herself. And nobody would have remembered. They would have said, oh, she sounded a little bit off in the beginning. But, you know. And that's what she would have said. It's you know, so I get it. I love love Adele. I do. I absolutely love her. She's just, she's fabulous. I like how she talks, you know. She's Mm -hmm. kind of, she doesn't really talk proper, you know. She's like, oh, fuck. (laughs) But she's just like... Oh bloody hell! She just she just says what she wants, but she should have just kept singing. Right? This one I hadn't heard about. So yeah, oh yeah, it was all about Metallica. And no, no, no. It was this. It was this. So it was this. Um, there were a lot of musical tributes, um, and she was doing one for George Michael. Okay. And she was doing this song called "Fast Love," which actually I had never heard. I, I think it's one of his later songs. I'm more familiar with with uh, the stuff from the '80s because that's you know when I fell in love with him because um, I'm old and um to most people out there yeah to my kiddos i'm old don't laugh you're older than me so i know (laughs) you hush (laughs) oh hush um and and keep it down now voices carry 50 bucks to whoever can name that to whoever wrote that song um no i'm not i'm kidding i'm not giving away money on the air but maybe a tote bag i don't know um you gotta call in to win though Right? You gotta call in to win 608 210 1667. We're gonna do a whole bunch of crazy giveaways for Valentine's Day. Um, but yeah, she just, I, my whole take on it is like you get that far into the song, really. And then you stop it. And then you stop. And then so they did, they started again. And then they started again okay. from the very beginning. And it's this long, it's just re, like very, there's, the reason she messed up is because there's very little. Um, instrumentation in the beginning mm. and so it's a lot of her just her singing so when okay. the band comes in like when it comes in all of a sudden she's not with it it's like oh just fix it and keep going but you know she's only like what 28 or something 27 I I, I, I have no idea <laughs> she's young she'll learn She'll learn, I guess. But the only oh. thing I did see was the Metallica Gaga yeah. bit, and what I saw on that were two professionals on stage that were Just dealing playing. with a, dealing well dealing with a technical problem in, yeah. in the moment, and doing what they had to do to get yeah. through it. And of course, I did see the guitar being thrown, like literally <laughs> flung really? off stage at the at, <laughs> at the end of it all. And that's what most people were focusing on. Oh, James Hetfield, he was that off. I would have been mad. I would have been, well, been mad too. But but what I saw in the performance right. though, was both of them were being pretty, totally professional, totally professional, totally pro. Yeah, figuring it out, you know, on the fly. That's that's the sign that's of what a, you do. Yeah, that's what you do. Exactly. I mean, James Hetfield. How long have they been playing? I wonder when they were like right. nineteen yeah. when they started playing. Yeah. Back in the 90s so, or not. Mariah Carey could take a lesson or two from a James Hetfield. <laughs> you know, that made me so angry watching that, watching Mariah Carey. And I admit I was watching because I was home watching. I was like, girl, come on. Just, she's just, then, 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 you know, just sing. Those people, that was wrong. <laughs> that was just wrong. But you know who was right? And who I cannot believe I'm saying this about. My husband's probably going to, like, he's not listening right now because he's at work. But, like, kill me. Alicia Keys. I love Alicia Keys. I have never been a huge fan of Alicia Keys. I don't know much by her, but I just love her voice and, something, and her, and her see, piano Something playing. about her has always just kind of, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know how to say, I don't know how to explain it. Just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I don't know why. Um, my husband's problem with her is that on her first album, she credited herself with Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. Like, like she starts to play the beginning mm-hmm. of it, and she only credits herself. She doesn't credit Beethoven. And it's well, like, maybe it's past like, the statute of limitations, yes, A. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. but. 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 It's like, I should have a whole series of greeting cards. Yes, but. Like, no. <laughs> like I'm sorry, but. Like, you know, yes, like, but. yes, but. Just because, you, no, you don't, mm. no. But, 
my my the reason I like Alicia Keys now, um, first of all, I love her whole going natural thing. Do you know about this? No, I, I, no. She went. She has decided last year to go natural, meaning her hair, her face, no makeup, oh. no hair products, like nothing. She just. Like, does that, she look like a wildebeest now? No, she is beautiful. See, she is beautiful as she ever was and always will be. And she actually looks young, you know, she looks really youthful and young and happy and glowing. I don't know what she's eating or drinking, but it's making her look fabulous. But she is putting her money where her mouth is. She um, created this uh, with, with the We Are Here movement, uh, a short film called Let Me In, and it is. A short film that theorizes what would happen if the bombs were falling in L.A. instead of in Syria. And all of a sudden, you had to leave your house with nothing except your children and the clothes on your back. And you had to go to Mexico Hmm. to flee. Is Mexico taking in refugees right now? No. Oh, that's the scenario. That's though. the scenario. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that they don't want to take them in because mm-hmm. we're going to, you know. But, and it's this really heavy, like, I, I watched it and was just in complete awe. She's a great actress, but uh, which is beside the point almost. Mm-hmm. I think the fact that she involved herself in this project is amazing because... When you put your money where your mouth is, the people are always saying celebrities should just keep their mouths shut. No, no, or no, do no. Something. Celebrities should be screaming and and being the ones to make these issues as far-reaching as they possibly can, because they're the ones with the mouthpieces. They're the ones with the access, and uh, the, we will listen to them. If if just some random regular Joe said you need to. You need to be nice to refugees. Who's going to listen to that? No, Alicia Keys goes out and says it. A million millennials go, okay. Alicia Keys said something. Did you see that? Yeah. yeah. I okay. totally saw that because it's okay. online and stuff. I bet you makeup places are like afraid of Alicia <laughs> Keys right now. Because, you know, she's gone natural. All these young girls are going to go natural. <laughs> but this this amazing piece, and we'll put it in the podcast notes, it's called, it's the We Are Here movement. And their their mission, it says... We are a coalition of organizations joined together to give millennials an exciting way to change the world. So this is geared specifically mm-hmm. towards millennials who are looking for something to do. They know that we are messing up the I've world. Because I've heard that they're, <laughs> they're lazy and they but just it's expect not their things. Fault. It's not their fault. Their parents messed them up big time by telling them they were special all the time. So that's a whole other thing. I think we did. Didn't we talk about it on the first podcast? Probably. But, but this is the, the thing is, is that the millennials, and I, maybe it's a Hard to you can't generalize an entire generation, but they're waking up yes, and but. realizing yes, but that that their predecessors are messing up this planet, and with each generation, it's up to the next one to okay, we got it, we got to pick, <laughs> we got to fix what our parents we gotta fix, messed up, we got to fix it, we got to pick up the 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 shovel essentially and go to work, and this is a way. Millennial, this is a shovel. <laughs> Have you ever seen a shovel before? <laughs> I saw one hanging in my dad's garage. <laughs> okay, do you know what it does? <laughs> it shovels all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, but it, it it's this amazing organ. So it's this way to connect uh, millennials with causes and things and actionable things that they can do because people need people need direction. You know, there's so much like craziness going on. As a species, right I think we do inherently crave. Structure. Direction, yeah, structure, <laughs> well, structure, and, and and leadership, you know, and it's like here, uh, let me show you. Oh, great, because I don't know what I was doing yeah, here. I was just like making something out of a stick. <laughs> um, cool, that sounds important. All yeah, right, but here's someone who is saying, here, come on, come mm-hmm. on over here and take a look at what we're doing, and they are amazing. It says they are will break through today's ADD environment <laughs> with campaigns that are always current, positive, conscious, and ready to inspire. Equality and racial justice, women and children, climate and consciousness are our major focus areas. Now, if you have a problem with equality, racial justice, women and children, or climate and consciousness, then then you got a problem. <laughs> Those are things that are very important. The perspective, perspective is everything. Those are things that are very important, especially to millennials. They see 
the world differently than even we do, and certainly the way our parents do. My kids, I can't remember what they're calling them. What's the next? The next, there's like a, no, there's like a new, anyway. there's a whole <laughs> other one, but my kids who are, who are seven and nine, they, I know they call them the seven and nine year olds. Seven and nine year olds. <laughs> they don't see race and gender in the same way yeah. that even millennials do or that we do. You know, I've talked about this before, but when I mention issues of race or sexism to my, to my, my nine year old especially, he looks at me completely befuddled. Like, mom, that's just stupid. You know, like, just can't comprehend. And yes, we live on the east side of Madison. And so I come from I come from that perspective. You know, I'm a New York atheist liberal Jew living <laughs> on the, the east side, of, but living on the Little east side of Madison. So that's, that's the melting pot. That's of my life. perspective comes from. All right, we got one more segment. We are here at movement.com. That's the Alicia yes, Keys Yes, check uh, that site. out. Um, and we'll be back in a few, so Mama says. All right. Okay, what's left? Oh, okay, yeah. You're right there, Mama? Yeah, I've been holding that cough for like... <laughs> hey, you know, uh, Mitch has a cough switch right here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Funny. A muter, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. All right, so <coughs> let's see. There was, <coughs> oh, what was that? One? Oh, okay, definitions of fairness. Did you see that post? This, I have to read this. This is brilliant. It, go, it, go, it goes to, yeah, it goes to the perspective thing. Um, this woman, it's this one. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to read it because it's really... It goes to what we're talking about as far as perspective. Oh, and I need to do a Rick's Old Gold. I forgot about that. Yep. I need to do a spot. Let me do that right out of the gate. Yeah, I'll do that one. first. So sorry, I can't close that. There we go. All right. Oh, I just realized I'm not on. Is anybody listening? Okay. Hey there, back with Soul Mama and my good friend Todd Osborne. Hello. Um, this uh, next segment is also sponsored. Woo-hoo. I love and why you say sponsored. It's sponsored. I'm so excited. I can't. That's my excited voice. Maybe I should come up with a different one. Sponsored by. There we go. Uh, by Rick's Old Gold. Love located. That place. It's. I love this place. It's located at 1314 Williamson Street on Madison's East Side. This is like a totally East Side show, right? This 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 show brought to you by Madison's Hippy Dippy Weird East Side. Um, owned and operated my favorite by people. Owned and operated by Ricardo Paoli otherwise known as Rick, uh, for 22 years, so longer than I've been in Madison. He's a Madison native. They specialize but are not limited to loose diamonds for engagement rings Mm -hmm. or wedding rings and earrings, colored gemstones, new and estate jewelry, precious metals like gold, silver, platinum, palladium. Palladium. Wasn't that a club in New York City in the 80s or something? Um, Antiques and musical instruments. They have, if you go in there, they have, it, they, it's like such a, just a beautiful visual banquet. There's so many uh, accordions and, and uh, amplifiers and cool old musical equipment. So if you have some gold or silver or stuff that you need to sell because you need some extra cash, go on in there and they will give you a fair uh, price for your, for your precious metals. All righty. So yay for the east side. Pitching in this week, sponsoring Soul Mama Says. I love the East Side. I love the East Side, too. You know, I, I went to my community to go and, and, and try and get some some sponsors, and, some, and they, are, they are supporting me, and I love my community. Go Willie Street. Anybody watching on Facebook Live? Here? I don't know. I don't think anybody's watching, but they can watch later because it's yes, going to okay. be up on YouTube. Um, so yeah. Uh, one of the things that... I found this week was an amazing uh, explanation. We've been talking about perspective. And definitions are really important to me. If you, two people are coming at a word, one word with different definitions, 
-hmm. then you can't go forward, right? If you can't agree on the basic premise of whatever it is that you're talking about, and I took logic in college, there's my rebellious background, I took logic and math and did all this stuff, and if you were starting with a falsehood or two sides that don't agree on the same information, then it's really hard to go forward from there. So I found some, I can't remember what the thread was, but this woman on Facebook, Vicki Jones, hi out there, if you're out there, um, on a, in, a, in a comment thread came up with this incredible definition um, of fairness. And that's the issue here. So I'm just going to read this. When we approach communication as a battle, we attack and defend. There are winners and losers. Well, actually, everyone loses. Exactly. That's why I try hard not to use labels and call people names. Name calling is an attack. So I've come to understand that both sides care deeply about fairness. They disagree on what the word means. Right. To, and then she uses T. She, yeah, she yeah. uses T to say Trump. So to Trump's voters, fairness is about what you deserve. Uh, whereas justice equals reward or punishment. They believe that they are not getting what they deserve and that someone else is getting it instead. The reason for their fear is that they believe in the zero-sum game. And this is something, if you're not familiar with this, it means if somebody wins, somebody else has, has to, to lose. lose. There's a finite number of things, and so you can only, you know, somebody wins, somebody loses. Prosperity is finite, and if we, the deserving, don't have it, it's because they, the undeserving, have taken it from us. Yeah. There is some truth to this, but what Trump supporters don't see yet is that they have been focusing their anger and resentment on the wrong they. The evil is inequality. Okay, let me say that again. The evil is inequality. And the villain isn't the migrant slash Muslim slash black, etc., but the wealthy. Unfortunately, thanks to 35 years of neoliberalism, the wealthy haven't convinced or have convinced the Trump supporter that mega wealth is deserved. So you're an American, you deserve this, right? That's, that, right. that's, that's the, the American that's dream. That's the American dream. My um, stuff. I don't know what it will take to convince them that the, pe the, the people they hate are merely scapegoats. Uh -huh. Love that word. Yeah. And that the future they fear is a red herring. Now, here's the other part. To liberals, fairness is about equality. Justice equals a level playing field, play, level playing fields and working for opportunity and well-being equally available to everyone throughout the Commonwealth. So what, everybody gets a trophy then? Is that what you're saying? No, not everybody gets a trophy, but everybody gets the same opportunity to try to win that trophy. Everybody starts at the same level to then try and win. Okay, so I'm going to, what we don't see yet is that, the, oh, what, okay, what we don't see yet is that Trump's people are suffering just as much as the people we want to protect, albeit for different <laughs> reasons. That's very important. I'm going to say that again. They might be suffering. Oh, wait, no. Trump's people are suffering just as much as the people we want to protect, albeit for different reasons. They might be suffering from fear and hardened hearts and willful ignorance. But the more we focus on their faults, the less able we are able to see. Oh, wait, no, sorry. The less able we are to see our own complicity. Exactly. Okay? We have to listen. Don't get me wrong. I'm still mad as hell at the people who voted as they did, and I have no tolerance for their racist, sexist, heterosexist, xenophobic biases. Ooh. But the more energy I put into griping about their biases, the less able I am to see my own. <gasps> Somebody admitting to having biases. I looked in the mirror oh and I saw some God. bias. Oh my gosh. And unless I understand my own blind spots, I'll never be able to see their humanity. And I'll keep getting in my own way. That is so important, so important to be able to put yourself in someone else's perspective or in their shoes. You can't, you can't ever really truly understand someone's perspective unless you have been with them their whole lives, right? Because your perspective comes from everything that gets you there, what you've seen, what you've done, how you've been treated, how you've treated others. That all goes into shaping who you are now. And so your perspective is this accumulation of all of these things, not just one thing or another. That's why every Trump supporter doesn't come from the same have the same perspective, just like every liberal doesn't have the same perspective. We have very different perspectives because it's this accumulation. But if we don't admit that, and we don't admit that we each have our own biases, which we do, everyone does, I don't care who you are, you come into this world fresh, but you then 
develop all these things because of the, the experiences that you have. You can't, unless you do nothing and never meet anyone your entire life, right? You will never have, you'll never gain a perspective. Right around the time when I was really kind of putting a lot of thought into this, I was going mm-hmm. to a lot of seminars, a lot of uh, conferences where we were, we had the opportunity to have some really, really great sessions with uh, some speakers and authors um, that uh, were focused specifically on helping us as broadcasters to communicate better mm-hmm. and to, you know, feel the needs of our listeners and our, you know, everybody around us. Um, one book that ended up, I think, in one of our gift bags, this, I just thought of this about five minutes ago, ten minutes ago, um, was called Crucial Conversations, Tools mm-hmm. for Talking Ooh. When Stakes Are High. Ooh. And out of that That's entire exciting. book, <laughs> I just got goosebumps, too, because mm. this was something that's been talking in the back of my head. Uh, one of the... The one phrase out of that entire book. So again, from Crucial Conversations, Tools for Talking. We'll put the info in the podcast notes. When stakes are high. When we have conflict, there is usually something that somebody is not saying. And Mm. when you identify what's not being said, then you can have the conversation. Listen to the silences. Same goes for music. you got to listen for those pauses. you got to listen. We have to listen to each other, people. That's what I'm hoping you take away from today. And right? thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening. My mama says you learn something new every day. Hopefully today you learned it from me. Happy Valentine's Day. Be nice to each other. Listen to each other. Give the gift of listening. That's what your gift should, for Valentine's Day should be. Perfect. Listen. Mwah! Cheers. Good. We got a whole listening. We're going to wrap that up. We did. We did. Nice job, Karen. All right. That was great.